Hello guys, I've called this little waffle how to fix things. Um, you don't have to be an absolute expert to be able to fix different things. Um, I lent this little inverter out. Not a good thing to do, lend things out. It's old hats, an old bell radio inverter, 12 volts in, uh, 240 volts out. I put this socket on here. Nowadays you can buy one about that big. <laughs> but it's very handy to take down to the boat and connect it on the battery of the boat and uh, run an electric drill or something. So I don't throw it away. Anyway, don't work. Oh dear. I mean, if I borrowed something and it didn't work, I'd replace it or repair it or do whatever. But anyway, we won't go there. It doesn't work. So we'll look at this. I've got a few things to repair this morning. So I'll give you a waffle. I'd have thought you'd have been fed up with my waffles by now, but um, well, I've got to talk to someone. I might as well talk to myself if no, <laughs> if no one's watching. What's he done to this? This is uh, this is nothing more than a that can't fit. This is nothing more than a. a transistor, I think there's a couple in this one, an oscillator into a transformer, um, nothing too technical, but as I say you haven't got to know how things work necessarily, it doesn't matter what it is, it can be a car, or a watch, an engine, outboard, you name it, I mean it helps if you know something about them, but uh, common sense and a bit of Detective work will usually get you through a lot of faults. You'd be amazed how much equipment and stuff I've gained over the years where people have thrown things out and there's been nothing more than a fuse gone or a wire off. Sometimes there's not that anything wrong with it at all. So don't overlook the obvious. I can't make that point stronger. I think I told you about my mate uh, Deb John. He's no longer with us unfortunately. But he wasn't known for his patience. Ha! In a fit of temper, he smashed his wife's vacuum cleaner up into a million bits. Only to find out later on in the day, his wife came in and with sign language, she says, John, she's a let been off all morning. <laughs> oh, priceless, priceless. Um. I took an apprenticeship in a a radio cum TV concerns and um, I was a field engineer, oh my gosh, I was a field engineer and uh, a lot of the work we did was pretty straightforward. A lot of common faults, certain sets would have common faults. Look at the state of this. Um, that's what I've done to <clears throat> And it wasn't that you was a genius or anything like this, but uh, you knew it was such and such a model and you knew they were prone to such and such a fault. Oh, it's such and such a model. I bet you tent the one such and such has gone down, so you pretty well fixed it before you got the back off. Well, while the customer was telling you what it did or didn't do. But as I say, it wasn't because you was particularly clever. You'd probably done five or six earlier on that morning. Um, but on the rare occasions that, uh, you know, it stumped you. I mean, I fixed 95% of everything I looked at, but on the odd occasion, you didn't have the time, the equipment, or above your abilities. I'd take it in and uh, Ken in the workshop. Brilliant bloke, absolutely. Oh, that looks nice. A brilliant bloke. He absolutely knew his stuff, and he did know his stuff. But uh, he looks all right. But he, I've seen him pull his hair out with with the obvious, and it's um, not seeing the wood for the trees. 
whether it's a car, whether it's a watch, whether it's an outboard, whether it's a piece of TV, whatever, use all your senses. You've got eyes, you've got ears, you've got touch, and you've got a nose. Look, can you see anything burn? Is anything come adrift? Is there a wire off? No. Has anything fell out? Is anything loose? You've got feeling. Is anything hot? With it switched off, of course. Can you smell anything? Has the transformer burnt out? Is there anything like this? So when you've done all the other checks, you can look at obvious things. Well, I can't see anything wrong with this. These are little uh, resistors. They look all right. Well, let's do the obvious. Let's. That's off. Put that on there. We'll put that on there. Oh, I can hear it oscillating. Uh, let's take that light. Oh, well, that works. That works. Putting my hands in there, you notice. Wow, nothing wrong with that. Perhaps, perhaps he was trying to draw too much current from it. These only give out about 200 odd watts, I think, something like that. But at least it gives out a sinusoidal waveform. I know you, I know it's, you can laugh at the size of this old hat stuff, but modern ones, they chop the uh, the mains up into little bits and spit it out in chunks. I don't like uh, switch mode power supplies. This is the proper one. So I'll stick with this. All right, we'll put it back together. Um. Overlooking the obvious, overlooking the obvious. I'll give you an example. Um, I think a TV came into Ken from one of the other stores. It was dead. Incidentally, anything that's dead, an engine that won't start, a TV that won't work, a watch that won't tick, anything that's dead is a lot easier to fix than... Well, it's one of the easiest fix if it's dead. You, at least you've got something to work on. It's when things are intermittent, when they sometimes work, you never know if you fixed it or not. <laughs> anyway, he had this set. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. He had this set. And on the ticket it said dead, so he plugged it in the wall, plugged the thing in the wall, and started to take the back off with his trusty Avo when in there with his probes, you know. Checked around inside, no voltages, nothing nowhere. Nothing. Oh. So he goes to the fuse. No, nothing at the fuse, no mains at the fuse. Goes up to the switch, nothing at the switch. No. Pulls the plug out the wall, puts his meter on continuity, it goes across the pins of the plug, yes, it's got about the right reading, right? Puts the plug back in the wall, goes in the set, nothing. Doesn't understand that. Pulls it out the wall, out the wall again, puts his meter on AC, puts it in the socket, yes, he's got mains coming out the socket. Puts his iron in the socket, yes, his iron gets warm, put the TV back in, goes in the set, nothing. No, 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 this is not right. So he pulls the plug out again, and he goes on continuity, and he checks continuity across the plug, yes, and there. So he checks that bit of lead up to the switch, yes, that's all right. And the other bit of lead up to the switch, yes, that's all right. Well, this starting to go silly now, you know, and... Uh, now we're talking about a brilliant bloke here, a good bloke, someone I highly admired, but he was just not seeing the obvious. So what was it? <laughs> You're going to laugh. Somebody had either changed or put or checked the plug and they'd put the wrong top on the plug and it was deeper. And when he pushed the plug into the wall, 
it allowed one of the pins to go back into the into the body of the plug. <laughs> But when he pulled the plug out from the wall, there was enough spring in the wire to push the pin forward. So, <laughs> don't overlook the obvious. Oh, I could tell you some tales about uh, the service department. On the other hand, don't dabble in things you don't know anything about. Um, you can cause a lot of trouble. Not only have you got to sort out what the original problem well, is or was, you've got to sort out what some idiot has done. And some guy come in, let me put this top on, some guy come in and uh, he says, my radio's packed up, he said, um, oh look, there's a circuit there. Oh, I never knew that. Oh. Oh look, interesting. Ah, oh, there's four transistors and they're in flip-flop across the, yeah. Oh, I'll draw that out, that's interesting. Okay, um, he says, uh, my radio doesn't work. He says, I've had a look and immediately your heart sinks, you know. And uh, he says, I found six or seven, he says, Screws that were loose, he says, I've tightened them all up, he says, but uh, they still don't work. What screws have you tightened up? What what bolts were loose? And he turns out he'd gone in every IF can. <laughs> he'd gone in every IF can and he'd screwed the dust iron course down at the bottom of these cans and of course he'd broke every single one and so the set had to be realigned. Then we had to find out what he did. Oh dear, you know, it'd be better if he'd left it alone. The other guy comes in, he says, I've lost all my stations. What do you mean you lost all your stations? And when we looked right across the top of this, <laughs> top of this radio was a big dial, but it was just a plain piece of glass. And he decided to clean the glass with a, a drop of um, petrol on a rag. <laughs> <laughs> he'd wiped all the markings off. <laughs> I don't know what he thought he was going to do. <laughs> oh dear, good fun. Poor old Ken, we we uh, we played some horrible tricks on him, you know. He was no wonder he was white. As I say, poor old boy, no longer with us. And uh, he used to smoke like a chimney. And I think he used to smoke players or senior service or something. Anyway, he's always smoking these cigarettes. And we used to use a, copper t a tinned copper wire for our soldering irons and uh, for the heat end. Where's the cover gone? Yeah. And uh, which way around that go? That way, I guess. That way. And anyway, we got a piece of this wine just for a giggle, you know. Oh, we were lads, you know. And uh, we stretched a bit of this wire out and we pushed up these cigarettes. <laughs> and um, and then cut the end off with a pair of side cars. And uh, anyway, he's smoking away there and he's, he's flicking his, his ash off his cigarette. And it isn't coming off, and he's still smoking away. And eventually, he's got a, he's got half a cigarette with half ash on the end. Still not. And he flicks. Hey, look at this! He said, "Here's a bit of wire in my in my cigarette." Christ, he says, "That's dangerous." And we're all going, "Yes, Ken. Yes, Ken. Try and knock the snigger, you know, because we all thought it was hilarious. Anyway, he was a smart bloke, but he didn't gotten on. We'd played a trick on him. Oh, I'm going to complain, he says. Anyway, we let it drop and he came into work the next morning. <laughs> he says, I've got Beryl, that's his wife, I've got Beryl to write my stinking letter. Who? People who make the cigarettes, he says. Can't, can't, he says, they're dangerous, he says, dangerous. Well, now the joke has sort of backfired, hasn't it? <laughs> so we're all keeping stump. And uh, anyway, it completely backfired on us. Stand up and do this.
because about, oh, I don't know, a week or so later, he got a letter back from players, and he says, look at this, guys, and he read it out to us. I can't remember the exact words, but it was something like, dear sir, or whatever his name was, you know, why doesn't that line up? Go on, get in there. Perhaps it uses a bigger one. No, it doesn't. Near the bigger one. Why am I having problems here? That's the one. Dear sir, uh, thank you for your letter regarding foreign bodies in your our products. We have scrutinized the factory and uh, most carefully and can find no evidence of this gauge of wire in our manufacturing process. So we can only assume therefore, and I'm going to find one of these that was going to fit in a minute, I, we can only assume therefore it must be the work of a practical joker. So please accept with our compliments. <laughs> 500 cigarettes. <laughs> so uh, that was an amusing event. Poor old Ken. Why am I struggling with these? Ah, better. They're the ones that go in the side. Watch what you take out is where they go back. It's what you should do. Another time, another time, he was repairing, I think it was an old Ferrograph tape recorder. That's it. And the UV meter had gone. Anyway, he checked it out and it got out of circuit, so we didn't have one in stock, so we sent away for one. Anyway, when it came, he was away that morning. And being little devils, we got some very, very fine wire. Thinner than the thinnest food wire you can find. Tiny strand, less than a hair. We wound it across the terminals. <laughs> anyway, it goes to a lot of trouble putting this thing in. And uh, of course it didn't work, did it? Because it was effectively shorted out. I mean, we're only looking at it through millivolts and it went through the wire instead of the meter. Oh, was he cross? <laughs> but uh, we thought it was great fun. But uh, you just never know. You, you never know the logic. Um, for instance, we ha I had a, a neighbour, Mrs. Neil, lovely person. Another one that's dead now. Um, she could never get a car to go. She was always, you know, poor old chap, can you come and fix my, get my car going, you know. She was forever doing that. Do you mind? No, my dear, of course not, if you bit your tongue, you know. <laughs> oh, dear, all good stuff. Anyway, I heard her go down to her garage one day, and, and the usual thing, you know, it's sort of yung, 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 Poor old chap, I can't get my car. <laughs> oh dear, I heard it going one day, and I'm, I'm, I'm wait, I'm just waiting, you know. I didn't hear anything. I thought, oh well, perhaps he's cleaning the car, you know. And uh, <laughs> next minute, sorry to be a nuisance. I know I'm a nuisance. Ever so sorry. Could you please come and put your magic wand over my my motor? So I went round and some asbestos garage. I stood to one side because I didn't know it might have been in gear. It might have run me over. No, I'm not knocking women drivers, but, you know, I'm just trying to paint a picture here. And that one ain't going to go in there. Anyway, she put the key in the ignition, turned the key, and it went click, click, click. Oh, that, that, that sounds like... The starter mode is not engaging the, the engine. So, 
lifted up the bonnet, the hood as you call them in the States, and uh, I said, put your lights on. And headlights come on, they were dim, just broad daylight, but they were just dim glimmers, you know. Well, I'm looking at this engine, I've never seen this engine before, but I automatically went to the battery and sort of went to feel if we got a loose connect, and out, one was hot, blinking hot. So, uh, anyway, I wiggled it again and the lights come up all lovely and bright. So I said, try it now, so, vroom, and away it goes, you know. Well, talk about false logic. I've since been told that when Mrs. Neil can't get her car to start, she turns her headlights on. Ha 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 ha! you couldn't make it up, could you? All good stuff. All good stuff. Are you still with me? Gosh. Okay, well, I just nipped in and made a cup of tea. Right, I think we can put this out of the way. Down there. That'll do. Look at this thing. <coughs> Little weather station. <laughs> Climate. That's a clever word on. Got given this. It's packed up. No display. <sighs> come out. Looks like it might. Yeah. Come out. I don't want you on there. Nothing. One of the batteries gone. As they come out. As I say, look for the obvious. Oh, I've got one one battery in there. Oh. Always look for the absolute obvious. Come out. There she goes. What is it? G13 button cell. Positive there. Must be negative. It's a bit grotty. Uh, <coughs> DC tiddly um pom pom. Gotta be about. Again, try 10 volts. It'll be a lot less than that, but we can come down though and go up. <coughs> uh, positive with the body. Oh, we ain't got much there, have we? That's on 2.5. Oh, we haven't got a volt there. So I guess it's about 3 volts, I guess. Anyway, I've got some spares here. What did I say it was? Blood me memory. AG13. Oh, these are only cheapos. AG13, AG... Eighty thirteen. Ah, isn't it marvellous? The one you want, you ain't got. Anyway, it looks very similar to these deep ones. Let's try one of them. Anyway, back to what I said earlier. Look for the absolute obvious. Um, give you an example. One of the most common breakdowns on a motorway. It's running out of fuel. If you ask the RAC and uh, the AA, that's number one call out. That's why they can fix 95% by the side of the road. They carry a can of fuel. You know, follow. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Look, the green in there. No wonder where that don't work. Probably a bad connection. Um, followed by. Locking yourself out the car. <laughs> uh, flat battery. Uh, flat tire. I mean, has the crankshaft busted? Is it? Is the transmission blown? No, 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 no. You brought out a petrol. You got a flat battery. Unbelievable. Same on the water. Uh, during the summer, there was some guy. I was out fishing. And this little motorboat thing, about 13 foot plastic thing, turned up with it. This bloke behind the wheel and a, some dolly bird at the other, other side of Some blonde. No, I'm not having to go up blonde. 
But anyway, you got the picture. Which way is Brighton and see, mate? I see it's sort of north, northeast, north northeast from here. Uh, I, I haven't got a compass. He says, which, which direction? So I says, well, on the horizon, that's that tall building. Head for that. I said, that's right. I said, you're not very well prepared, are you? What do you mean? He didn't have a jacket. Didn't have life jackets. He didn't have a torch. Nothing. I says, there's no garages out here if you can't get, you know. Oh, I've got plenty of fuel. Plenty of fuel. I says, you haven't even got an anchor. I can see you hadn't. He says, I don't need one. I'm not going to stop. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable, isn't it? Absolutely unbelievable. When the RLNI, the Lifeboat Institute, they save hundreds of thousands every year all around the world. Do they go out in typhoons and mountainous seas around some rocky headland and all that? No, no. 95% of the time, it's some plonker in a speedboat who didn't allow enough fuel to get back to that which is a decent one and which is a bad one. Ha, 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 oh, you plonker. Um, to get back. And uh, that's a fact. Right, positive on the outside. That's one, and that's, whoop, and that's that one. Oh, that's a dodgy one. Right. <laughs> Will it, won't it? Will it, won't it? Just get me glass out of here. <clears throat> Certainly you'll do. When you go in, oh, it made a noise and it fell out. Try that again. There's the back. How does that go? Watch how you take things apart. Nothing. Oh. It made a beep, so what have we got? We've still got bad connections. So, look for the very, very obvious and establish how the thing meant to function and why it's now not functioning. That's probably not too well put, is it? <coughs> I know what I mean. This thing went beep, so there you go, it did it again. Let's hold it in. Ha 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 ha! Right. So it's connections here. Another job well done, folks. Yes, I know. There you go. All I've got to do now is set up all the dates and the time. I really liked it because, well, it does this little weather forecast on the top. But it also, if I get closer look, it's quite nice that it does moon phases, which is handy if I'm out night fishing. And today is not Wednesday the 1st of the 1st, so that uh, we want setting up. I'll have to sort of work out how I do that. It's one of these things where you push and hold and something blinks and oh I hate this sort of setup technology. You've got to go through a certain way of doing it. Anyway, that's operational now. Or is I waffling on a bit? I don't know. Boats, aye aye, and all that, yeah. Look for the obvious. Looking for the obvious, guy turned up the other day, a mate of mine, he says, uh, you can fix most things, blah, 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 which is a clever way of trying to <laughs> boost your ego to get you to look at something it's busted. Anyway, he had a, one of these shoulder strap, mini key weld of things, I heard about them, had occasion to use one, but um, anyway, it didn't work. And he didn't get a guarantee with it, and he bought it second hand. And, you know. Well, I said, I'll have a look. I never make promises. Anyway, 
did the usual carefully look, smell, look, touch, went in. I didn't know what I was looking at, didn't have a silicate diagram, loads of ICs everywhere, and everything looked clean, nothing burned out. So I didn't really know where to go and I wasn't prepared to spend ages and ages, it wasn't mine. But uh, Anyway, I sort of had a quick look and she'll get to see if anything fell out. And on the bench was a tiny, tiny, I don't suppose it was a, a mill and a half in diameter, a little tiny silver block. And it was on my other bench, which is black, rubber top. So I thought, what's that? And I sort of looked at the end of my finger, and this was on the end of my finger, and got me back to fine glass and looking. It had a tiny, tiny little hole in the middle of it. And I thought, that looks like looks like a piece of printer's circuit, just the end, the end gobbly bit. Don't know what you call it. Anyway, so I'm looking through this circuit very, very carefully, every inch, little bit by little bit. And there was a piece of circuit running along and it came to a, a point and then it stopped. And then just ahead of it, there was a tiny little hole with a little wire sticking through and it was a leg of a transistor. So I got my old uh, soldering iron and I just bridged that little bit across and dropped the solder and, and it all fired up and worked brilliantly. You're a genius, he said. You're a genius. Well, I wasn't going to argue with him, was I? <laughs> but uh, I had no more idea that uh, he'd well to work than the man in the moon. It was uh, new technology for me. It was this digital spit it out job stuff. And uh, But just using the eyes and a bit of detective work, the old Sherlock Holmes, got it up and running. And, uh, well, that's good for a bottle of wine once in a while, you know. <laughs> so don't be put off. But uh, if you're not sure what you're doing, be careful. Be very careful and don't add to the folks because uh, the repair man won't thank you for it. In fact, a lot of uh, repair shops won't touch anything if you've been into them. And I can well understand that. Anyway, how the hell am I going to find out how to program this up? I suppose if I go online. But uh, a simple fix, and you see me do it. Well, that's an absolute mega, mega, mega waffle. If that ain't enough for you, I don't know what. So cheers for now. <laughs>